When you get older, time seems to go by a lot quicker. I don't know if there's anyone who's ever studied this perception, or if I'm the only one who experiences this, and I should commit myself to psychiatric care immediately. Regardless, it really doesn't seem like it's been five years since Gangnam Style came out. Maybe it's because we're just sitting here watching the unending parade of viral nonsense tossed at us that it's really hard to pin down when anything really happened, but I feel like it was only a couple of years ago. Nope. Five years ago, Psy had the biggest worldwide K-pop hit of all time. A song almost entirely in Korean that included a silly video with a silly dance and a chubby man reinforcing the stereotype that Asians are wacky. It was the first YouTube video to hit a billion views. It was the first to hit two billion views, but it might not be the first to hit three billion, as Charlie Puth's song about seeing Paul Walker again has overtaken it. That video doesn't have anything goofy in it. Well, besides the idea that you'll see dead people again. But anyway, it's safe to say that Psy's Gangnam Style was a massive hit. So, what are his thoughts about it now? He took a phone call from Billboard this week to discuss the song. Since going viral, you've released many songs, and recently you released a new album, 4 times 2 equals 8. How does the song affect the rest of your work? Is it a struggle to live in a post-Gangnam Style world as a musician? I won't do an accent for this. Honestly, when I got the offer from Billboard about the interview for the 5th anniversary, I really thought, I don't want to talk about Gangnam Style anymore. Of course he did talk about it, because no one will talk to him in the US if he doesn't. Although, you can tell throughout the interview, he clearly has a love-hate relationship with the song that made him a world-known performer, and boosted his career in South Korea, where he was already apparently pretty famous. But this is how the interview ends. Any final words about your career moving forward with the legacy of Gangnam Style? The legacy of Gangnam Style these days on social media has a lot of people saying R.I.P. Gangnam Style because of See You Again. As soon as I saw those comments, I felt, why is he saying that? But after 30 seconds, I was smiling. What kind of pop song can get that comment? R.I.P. I liked it. Laughs. Did that make you feel like maybe it's time to move on from Gangnam Style and towards the next stage of your career? I really want to do so. This interviewer can't take a hint worth a shit, but seeing that his song was surpassed in views by See You Again had nothing to do with it. He clearly wanted to move on from Gangnam Style probably about six months after it came out. You can be the judge for yourself, I'll leave a link to the interview in the description. But you can tell he's sick of it, sick of talking about it. He's sick of being Bart in the I Didn't Do It episode. He wants to talk about his other songs, his other albums, and all he gets is, Say the line, Psy! He had five albums before the one with Gangnam Style, and two after it, and no one's calling him up here to be like, Hey Psy, you want to do an interview about your new album? Even when the interview asked a question about 4 times 2 equals 8, he had to ask about, How does Gangnam Style affect it? Not even, how does it differ from your previous work, or now that you're 40, what does that experience bring to your latest work? It's always, how can I relate this back to the horsey dance song with these fucking people? And this is actually pretty common, artists eventually resenting their most popular work. Radiohead very rarely performs Creep, despite it being their biggest song. Tom York has called it Crap, which is probably the only thing me and old Thom agree on. I'd read somewhere once that Primus wouldn't play Winona's Big Brown Beaver anymore, which is definitely their most well-known song for anyone who grew up in the 90s and watched MTV or much music. And the Beastie Boys stopped playing Fight For Your Right back in the day because people didn't understand that it's making fun of the frat boys who chant along to it. Hell, I can sympathize in my own small way, despite the fact that I make about 52 videos a year, and six of those are musical autopsies, go check, I've never done more than six in a year, and one is a worse songs list, I'm a music critic. I get emails from indie musicians wanting me to review their work. Got one from Portugal the man's management, not to be confused with Portugal the country or Portugal the non-binary person, asking me to roast their latest album. How fucking fake is that? But anyway, artists become hipsters of their own work, feeling that their lesser known hits are better. Or maybe they just want them to get the same exposure as that one big thing that they're known for, because clearly, if you liked that, you'll probably like their other work. Unless, of course, their other work is just them screaming into a big metal tube with a dog trapped inside it that's howling back at them for 45 minutes. But that's probably unlikely. Unless maybe it's Bjork. But anyway, happy 5th anniversary to Gangnam Style, Psy. Congratulations on 5 years of having to hear Do the horsey dance and Oop, oop, yelled at you on the street and being forced to discuss it during every fucking interview. 
I almost feel bad. But, you know, for the amount of money that song's generated, I'd fucking horsey dance with a shit-eating grin on my face till my cock fell off, and then get it replaced with a gold diamond-encrusted prosthetic, and then pull it out during interviews and give the most expensive mushroom slaps ever any time someone mentioned the song. So, if you're looking to break another record, sigh, feel free to give that one a whirl.